You said that if it was up to Ole, he would have gotten rid of you. Uh, Ole, in general, what did you think of him as a booking mind and what did you think of him as a boss? Ole, I mean, Ole had a great mind for this business. Ole was an asshole. You know, I think, I think he... I think he wanted everybody not to like him so he wouldn't have to get close to nobody. I mean, you could have a conversation with him, you know, and, and which, like him and Stan Hansen got along some. But, uh, I mean, me and him didn't go out and eat no dinner together, you know. <laughs> Even if it wasn't – if Fabe was out the door, I still wouldn't have went and ate dinner with him. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to a couple more Oli things then. Um, tell me, so uh, apart from as a boss, apart from as a booker and everything, how good do you think Oli was as a main event talent? I draw money with him. I mean, uh, like, like when I went, once I got over, once I got over, say like you had the Rock and Roll Express and then you had all of them, all of the tag teams, right? But me, I would work singles. I'd work singles, and then once you know, once my program was over, they would bring Wahoo McDaniel in, and I'd team up with Wahoo, and we'd have a run with Oli and Gene or Oli and Ivan, uh, and I'd do that run, and, and then I'd so I'd go back into a single, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, my longevity was so good because I do I could do the tags, and they bring somebody new in, which made me fresh. And he got me out of the singles, you know. So I stayed fresh. I never, I never really had to leave. You know, a lot of guys you had to travel to different territories. I was so blessed. I mean, the only, I might, I, if I decided I need to break, I'd go home to Tennessee and wrestle there. Yeah, uh, you know. As I was going to say, in 1979, you lost a hair versus hair match with Oli. How much of the hair did he take off? He took off, you know him. He's a prick. He took off enough. <laughs> I still had to get it cut. Look like you know, it looked like I had the mange. But uh, but that's what draw business, and I didn't mind that stuff anyway. I mean, it grew, it grew back. But uh, it was the pain worth I, it. I'll give, an, I'll give you an example. Oh. Only what what uh, well, I don't know if it's a business mind or just being a prick. You can flip a coin and you can decide. But anyway, we're wrestling in Marietta. We're wrestling in Marietta, Georgia. And uh, it holds maybe four or 5,000 people. I, I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's me and, and uh, Stan Hansen against Ole and Ivan Cola. So we're in the back. Ole says, what do y'all want to do? Well, me, I never said nothing because I was a little young punk in the room, so he did whatever I was told to do. I did. And uh, he said it a couple of times, and Stan Hansen looked at him. He said, well, you the fucking booker and get paid for it. He said, why don't you tell us what we want, what, what you want us to do? I only said, okay, we'll go an hour Broadway. <laughs> I said, damn, Stan, maybe you should have said something. <laughs> See, anyway, and the house is sold out. It's sold slap out. We go out, boom, boom, boom. I mean, tear the house down. And uh, it was sold out. It was sold out. So we did the hour Broadway, come back the next week. It's got an hour and a half time. Then. Same shit. Oh, what do y'all want to do? And by then, I was about ready to just say, beat me. But anyway, I didn't say nothing. Then again, Stan said, you the booker. What do, what do you want to do? And uh, he said, okay, we'll go an hour and a half Broadway. And I'm thinking, damn. So sure enough, so, and it's sold out again. I mean, that's a long time with your other matches and then an hour, and now you're going an hour and a half. It, then people it was getting out late. So anyway, we go out there, and sure enough, we go another hour and a half Broadway. Hmm. I'm like, man, next time just beat me. <laughs> so. We come back the next week, two hour time limit, uh, and sold out again. Usually, if you usually when you do our Broadway, it might fall off a little bit because the people were there so late or whatever. But it was sold slap out again. So we get back there, say, "What y'all want to do?" 
hey, two hour Broadway, let's do it. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. And we went out there and we went, and what nothing said about no finish. We went out there, we went, and they said an hour and 45 minutes. And I was in there with Ole. He said, uh, he stopped me. He said, duck the clothesline, Luthien's press. See, so anyway, in about an hour and 50, I hit him with a Luthien's press and got the three count. And that building went, just blowed it out, you know, because they, it, and it went so long, they thought it was going to be another two-hour Broadway, you know. But but three weeks in a row, an hour, hour and a half, and two hours, and they still had the other matches, and the people still come back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of the of the hour, hour and a half uh, Broadways, what percentage of that were you in the ring? Uh, shoot, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. You you would work and you'd get a hold and you'd work it. I mean that's a long time. But with the tag, you could tag in and out and a little more razzmatazz. But it was, I tell you what though, all of us back then had a pretty decent pace too. Mm. I mean it, you'd get a hold, you'd get a hold, work it, and let the guy sell. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, because that's that was my gig selling. You know, I can I can I can I. That's that's what I love, dude. I I you look out and I'd have a little. Two or three little girls be crying because they beat me up. You know, when you get them to do that, you're doing, the, you're doing your job right. 